Good morning, everyone. Exciting, exciting day today. We're in a new book in the Bible, the book of Ezra. Yes. So, because of the last part yesterday, right, we're talking like Persians. Where the heck that come from now, right, with Cyrus sale? Uh, so I thought, I'm going to go and check that out a little bit. Well, it says, and I, and I thought, wait a minute, what did it say exactly about taking over this? When the Persian Empire came into being and they just started conquering everyone, actually things became better for Israel, for the Israelites. It sounds like it. And it was the Assyrians, supposedly, that, okay, well, it was the Chaldeans, okay, they were they part of Assyria, I guess, who knows. So anyway, so so uh, I went back just to get a little bit of clarity on what really happened there. There's one thing that then came to my mind on how that's Israel fell apart, completely apart. Now you got to think that's God's people that completely fell apart. And I thought about it was how could that happen just like that? When I think, when I remember what I read about history of the different countries, continents, and the countries, and how they they were and they're not now, and and or how they are now due to conflict, and oftentimes countries didn't go down or disappeared or were dismantled because. They didn't conquer another nation. It was because, and it is now so as well, because there was conflict within. And when you start killing off your own people, and in Israel, if, if anybody has followed me here, you, the the killing of each other was just, it's traumatic, okay? So when you deplete your own forces, your own defense within your own country because you're in conflict with each other like that then of course you're going to go and look on the outside to see who you could make a deal with this now nah, to help you out to fight your own people are you hearing me here that's what the israelites did and of course you become beholden to whom i said the deals to snap nah, to, and you start to lose your own self your own status as a country because now this little part belongs to someone that little part belongs to someone uh, kind of right and at the end of the last chapter here we can tell on how uh, that that one king uh, the assyrian was that assyrian called this came in and started taxing israel and okay just say tributes to another country nothing to do with israel I think that went on for quite some time, regardless in Israel. And then when the time came, they were so fragmented that, and again, so confused on, all right, that it was very easy for, you know, the Chaldean king, you know, Assyrians, to come in and just dismantle Israel. And then they were sent to Babylon. I went and found, I went in Mesopotamia at that time. Now it's part of Iraq, I believe. Iraq or Iran, one or the other. And uh, it was about 750 miles that the ones who survived, you know, were, were, were sent to. Now in another, when I started reading up on all this, and I went, okay, let me see this, let me see this, let me see this. And studied it on, studied on a little bit, it said that, no, they were not really actually, I was too far, that had, that, that they were not conquered by Babylon or Mesopotamia or what, because that was too far away, actually, from, from Israel. But then, again, as I said, so there's some, okay, some, some disagree on how that happened or have different ideas on that happened. It happened. And poor Israel was completely dismantled. Uh, and the people again sent to where? Uh, slavery. Got out of slavery, just somehow never quite found together.
truly as a people, right? After that experience in Egypt and uh, had all kinds of different ideas about what's supposed to happen. Now. Already too influenced by other beliefs. They couldn't lay down. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's very sad in a way when you think about it. Hmm. And ended up where again? Sounds like to me, with many of the stories, the complaints, and the constant going back to the idols, this and that, if, it's as if life was better as a slave. And they ended up again exactly where they kind of wanted to be. Right? Yeah. Anyway. No more kings. Done with kings. We don't want more kings. Done with kings. It's not it, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Could say more. But let's just get going here. It is a rainy day. It's been raining yesterday. It's been raining a lot. They even called school off. I have no doubt there's some flooding going on. The our uh, pond's really up. The river's really up. So, uh, it gets a bit dangerous around here. Yes? Yeah. Anyway, we're all right here. We got no problems here. It's never a problem here. Just, but around, uh, the country otherwise, there is. I mean, the county, rather. Of course, uh, our spring's filling up. It probably already is, so I need more water water the book of ezra so here is the uh introduction oh and i'm back in my jerusalem bible i could have started actually for the back here but uh i'm not sure what happened i just finished up the chronicles and the other one so this is good and you're beginning again in my favorite bible yes 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 the book of Ezra. And we are on page 425 in the Bible. How many pages are there? Let's go and have a look. Oh, no. Ouch. Ouch. The dogs came back all wet. CC doesn't want oh. them oh. that wet. <laughs> Too late. There are, with all the glossary and all the chronolo chronolo chronological table, there are 1,463 pages. All right. I've read books that had over a thousand pages in it, but I, I don't think I've ever read one that had that. Oh, here's Gus. No, 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 no. Hi, honey. No, 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 no. You're so wet. I love you, too. You're coming to say thank you for it. Let me move my book. Are you coming to say thank you for the food? Here, let me pet your nose. There you go. Oh, you're a good boy. Now take your wet self somewhere else. Go on. Go, go. Go. Go lay down. Go dry off. I don't want to excite him because then he put his paws on me. <coughs> there. <coughs> yeah, he just shook out there. It is what it is. Just water. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I didn't clean all them floors down there. <laughs> Being sarcastic. Sissy actually did. Clean some of the floors. I did too, but not not quite as deep cleaning as she did. And the paw prints are all over. It's like we got a painting going down there. It is what it is. Well, look where we live. Ah, who cares? That's an easy thing to clean up. The Book of Ezra deals with the crucial period of the re-establishment of the Jewish community in Jerusalem after the release from exile in 539 B.C. Before Christ. 
a moment which is of the utmost importance for the future of Judaism. Oh, it has a name now. The return, Judaism, coming from Judah. Now that makes sense. But that's not all of Israel, is it? It's still divided in a way. It should be Israelism. The return has been authorized and sundry privileges have been decreed by the central government of the Persian Empire in which Palestine now lies. Oh, that's interesting. And we're reading this at this time. You know, this just kind of tells me if people were to just go back and say, okay, how did this actually all work out? And how, and it at, at, at sounds like at that time, who made it possible for, you know, Judah, the Jewish community, Judaism, Israel, to reestablish themselves in Jerusalem, right? Do people so easily forget who you should thank for what you got or were given back? Eh, just saying. Okay. I mean, eh. But the book gives a fascinating picture of the efforts of the neighboring communities to frustrate the attempts of the Jewish settlers to return to normality, even including appeals to the central government. I wonder why they did that. Because the Israelites are such a cantankerous people. As I said, what, what did I start out with? Why did they fall apart? Why were they so easily suddenly taken over? Because of people on the outside at their fault? Or is Israel... The Israelites, the kings, the priests, all to, should all blame themselves, right? Yes? I'm just saying. And what kind of a, a conflict were they constantly, the Israelites, creating around with the people around them? Right? Yeah? And why? I'm just saying. Go back and read the, <laughs> the book of the kings and the chronicles. And you're going, oh, man. Okay. So, is that going to happen again? I think the people are tired of certain things that the Israelites just continuously did. Not just within their own country, but the others. Okay, just saying. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it is fascinating in a way, but it's very sad on the other hand. The story is difficult to follow. Yep, I found that too. Just to go and try and figure out, okay, what actually happened there and not all five? Who was all involved in that? They're not all in uh, agreement when it comes to that today. Decrees and counterpetitions are quoted at length in a surprisingly modern way, but events are related according to subject matter rather than chronology, and the chrono chronological order is further mixed up with sections. The relevant documents have been combined by the chronicler. Chronicler. I don't think I've ever came across that word. A chronicler. A chronicler. With Ezra's report of his mission to give a picture of the restored community devotedly centered on temple and law. So, sounds like Ezra was someone that did what? Okay. There are, there is a, oh, what was his name? Come on, give me the name now. A monk. In the, uh, about 1100 or something, he went around and he went to all different uh, uh, countries, continents, just he traveled around uh, almost all of his life and he recorded how the people lived, their culture, their beliefs, this and that, in a very uh, interesting, humorous way. And uh, so it sounds like Ezra was Kind of like someone like that as well at that time, much farther back. So again, because of, oh, who knows if that guy really exists. Is it? Well, it's that could be a possibility. And it sounds like that's, this could be an interesting book uh, from the perspective of one person 
uh, having written all this stuff down. Okay, so let's just see. But that just reminded me of. remember i cannot remember uh i still have the book i might, might, might pull it out that's a funny story about that book too okay all right all right, all right. then you'll just get going the book of ezra the return that's a super chapter the return from exile and the rebuilding of the temple again the return of the exiles one in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfill the word of Yahweh spoken through Jeremiah, Yahweh roused the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to issue a proclamation and to have it publicly displayed throughout his kingdom. Cyrus, king of Persia, says this, Yahweh, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has appointed me to build him a temple in Jerusalem in Judah. They did. I went and checked that out too, Persia at one point. Took over Europe and India. All of it. Just about all of it. Uh, interesting that how did they get to know about God? That would be interesting to know. All right, maybe something I'll go look up. Whoever among you belongs to the full tally of his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of Yahweh, God of Israel, who is the God in Jerusalem. And let each survivor, wherever he lives, be helped by the people of his locality with silver, gold, and equipment and riding beasts. Aha, that's what the people around that didn't like. Here come the Israelites, taking everything again and going to do what with it? Aye. Okay, gotcha. As well as voluntary offerings for the temple of God, which is in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Cyrus had some dreams or something, or if uh, he ended up being uh, in the presence of some of the Levites somehow, who told him about God. Interesting. Hmm. Then the heads of families of Judah and Benjamin, and of Benjamin, the priests and the Levites, in fact, all whose spirit had been roused by God. Oh, that's an inner effect. In fact, all whose spirit had been roused by God prepared to go and rebuild the temple of Yahweh in Jerusalem. And all their neighbors gave them every kind of help, silver, gold, equipment, riding beasts, and valuable presents in addition to their voluntary offerings. This is such an odd turnaround. I wish we'd know more about that. Well, maybe we'll find out more about this from Ezra here. Furthermore, King Cyrus handed over the articles belonging to the temple of Yahweh, which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his God. If his God, Cyrus, king of Persia, handed them over to Mithridat, the treasurer, who checked them out to she Shech Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. Oh. The inventory was as follows. 30 gold dishes, 1,000 silver dishes, 29 repaired. 30 gold bowls, 1,000 silver bowls, 410 damaged. 1,000 other articles, in all 5,400 articles of gold and silver. Shesh Bazar took all these with him when he led the exiles back from Babylon to Jerusalem. What a nice king. That King Cyrus? Hmm. That's, it is interesting. How did it all really happen? How did it all, gave it all back to them? <laughs> from that other king. How did he know that was all from the temple at the, at the time when he conquered that Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar. I tell you what, after having read that name so many times, I can I think I can say it now. Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, yes. List of the first exiles to return. Oh, wait a minute. That's the second one. Ooh, we're already done. That, that was short. I want to keep reading. No, no, no. Don't jump the gun. Got things to do. Stay on track. 
steady flow. There. Hmm. I have to say how interesting. I feel uh, as if, and again, maybe it's, it's, there seems to be, yeah, chronological order. There seems to be no order in the Bible when it comes to certain things where you're going, okay, I feel like I'm missing something here that will tell me more about on how, at the time and how things actually went, how they ended up, uh, uh, in Babylon, then under the power of the Persians, and uh, again, and it sounds as if the Persian people, the Persian kings, did not operate like the Assyrians or the Philistines or the, even the Egyptians or anyone else around them that, you know, as I said, Israel was constantly in conflict with or in cahoots. So, Anyway, all right, well, looks like we're getting, we're going to get a little, uh, history lesson here. Maybe, maybe not. How long is this book? Oh, it's not long. Oh, Ezra was not just writing all this down. He was actually a... Oh, it's only what? Oh, the list of the they have a list of the guilty in here. <laughs> it's only ten, ten little chapters. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay. Oh, you're being reunited with my favorite Bible. There. Let's say goodbye to our living Bible. I'm probably not going to use these anymore since I have my other one again. doubt it very much. Oh, I do need my pledge. Oh, wait a minute. I have to pledge in that one. I can leave the pledge in this one. Oh, what did I mark out here? Psalms. Ooh, that would be interesting too. Woo! Such an interesting book. Oh, just an interesting book. Really interesting. If one likes yes, to kind of delve into the spiritual aspects of life, right? It is. I get it. It's not a history book per se. Uh, and yet, uh, I find that to try and separate the physical aspects of life and spiritual aspects of life, right? isn't if you truly want to understand life you can't do that it's not it's it's not very productive there are too many loopholes in just the one or the other but when you combine the two right and find that that give and take between in 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 any area it doesn't matter what it is you find that that uh unity right on how the give and take between the physical and spiritual, how everything works together, only then will one get real clarity about things. Start to understand on how things work and what the ideal is to live on earth. Okay. Yes? Yeah. Uh, there was something else that had... I got a question from someone and I, I thought, man, that's, that's a book. That's writing a book again. And how to say it in a simple way. Uh, 
Uh, I find that the Israelites continuously, right, and it started with wanting their own king. By wanting their own king, what they started doing is separating from what? Something that only exists spiritually. God. God's guidance only exists spiritually when it comes down to it. So they wanted a king right, that was guiding them, something visible, rather than a spirit no one can see, right? that you have to be in tune with things. That's why there were priests and Levites and people who were in tune. <laughs> and uh, our forefathers, you know, seemed to be in tune with God. Uh, yes, so they could be, okay, so that's the, the physical manifestation of God. No, it's not. <laughs> that's just one way to channel God's guidance, right? Well, why couldn't a king do that? Because God didn't want a king. A king automatically means that you establish a pyramid of power. And that's not what God wants. That's not, no. In God's eyes, everyone's equal. It doesn't matter what station you're born at, or how much money you were born into, or how poor you are. It doesn't matter to God. To God, what matters to our heavenly parent, what matters is how you live on earth. How, what you're giving, not just taking, and clean up after yourself. Right? Yes? Yeah. Invent things that aren't damaging to your surroundings and yourself. Huh? Oh, just because it's a little more comfortable because now you have something that, but in the long run, what are the consequences for that short comfort that you get for your descendants, for example? Just say, yes. All right. You shouldn't have other people clean up after you. You should be doing that yourself. You should be leaving things in better order, in better condition, right? than when you found it. Say, for example, just say. And there has to be, yeah, so even if you don't believe in spirit life or this or that, and the afterlife of God, even if you're an atheist who just lives here physically happy hunky dory, you should think about your descendants. Yes? All right then. Made my point. So. It seems when the Israelites lost the guidance of God, they sided against the guidance of God. In a dis okay, well, they said, well, but we didn't. We just had, you know, what other people had. That's like a king that was okay, a king that, well, all these kings all had what seers and priests and that they had to go to, and and then them them go to them and prophets going down and telling them and what God says. So they didn't have uh, except for one or two who was chastised for it. Okay. Didn't have that connection to God. Yeah. So they were not a channel for the guidance of God. Some of them even felt they were above God. Yes. And things started to fall apart because the Israelites suddenly settled on what? The physical aspects of many different things. Territory needed to be conquered. Loot was great. Yeah. However... Women and children often regarded as cattle. Okay, I'm just saying. So, well, there you go. Right? Separated from the spiritual. Things just fell apart. Because they're supposed to be God's people. They were chosen to be God's people. That's what it said. Did God, did God make a bad choice? What did I say? God's eyes, everyone's equal doesn't matter if it's the Israelites or the Palestinians. To God, they're all the same. Hmm? Conflict isn't religion. The conflict is the people not realizing that you don't just live a physical life. You live a spiritual life. And your physical life prepares you for your spiritual life. Yes? Eternal life. Eventually. 
people want to become immortal. They invent all kinds of things to see how much longer you could live. Free stuff, clone stuff, this and that. Seriously? But you don't believe in the afterlife, the actual eternal life, the immortal life. <laughs> people so freaking weird out there. I'm sorry I have to say it. Yeah, Jesus wasn't wrong. Just look around you. Lots of fools. Lots of fools. Lots of fools. Don't live foolish lives. Right? Yes. All right. Well, anyway, I could talk more about it. I kind of try to explain it. You can't separate the physical and the spiritual. Yeah. As I'm not saying huh? you can't. You could say it so people would understand it better. But it's the wrong understanding there too. I say don't separate the physical from the spiritual. Then you will never be fulfilled. You will never be completely happy. You will never, ever, ever know exactly what it is to feel to be a human being living on earth and then spirit. You'll have a very difficult time. I could say, don't separate church and state. That's a dumb thing to do. I don't see how that can be done. Don't separate science and religion. It's not can't be done either. The one can't do without the other and vice versa. It, it is just the way it is. God designed it to all work together in unity and in harmony. You try to separate things out just for your own desires, your own lust and desires, your own ideas and how things should be. Then you're going to fail just like the Israelites failed. Brought them out of slavery from Egypt. They had their chance. Ended up back in slavery. In Babylon. Just saying. Okay. Got the proof in the pudding right here. Yes? All right. So, either side. Okay. If you're just all on the just scientific side, or just on the religious side, or something in, kind of in between, but you know, a little lorry farty, okay. lukewarm kind of stuff going on. Don't be arrogant about either side. Don't don't be arrogant. Don't don't think you got it all figured out. As long as people huh, are not willing to just work together on all these aspects, for what reason? Okay, well, really, do I need to say it? Then, uh, well, I guess we got a ways to go. Yes. I think to change it. What I see out there, it looks very, very good. But a lot of teaching still needs to be done. And again, I've seen some things where the people are worried about certain separations that are going on. And where, okay, well, so I'm moving on. I'm moving forward with God's people. So, oh, uh, the Left Behind series, right? Yeah, everybody knows that. I'm going to give this last... And I don't believe in that. I do not. Yeah, that no one left behind in school kind of thing. Yeah, what a joke. Yeah. No one left behind and stop the dog on bullying first. Okay? That's all, don't give me that other stuff. I like it. I, our school system here, everybody's kind of included. There's no child is being not taken oh, because of, of physical disabilities or mental capacities or whatever else is going on. The, every... The, Room is being made for everyone. I really like that about the school system here. And since I've moved here, they have worked on that. It wasn't always exactly like that, but they've worked on that. Right? They have, they started on a really wonderful path with that. Right? It's a smaller community. Yes, a little easier to do, but it's working. Right? And, uh, and many good things are happening because of that for everyone. Yeah, yeah, they're still working on the bullying thing, too. It's just, eh, sometimes it still happens. But uh, uh, to, to just think as a Christian that, yeah, yeah, since I do believe and I go to church and I read the Bible and blah, 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 and I, you know, try kind of, okay, again, you know, how much is there, how much pretense is there going on when it comes to all that? But uh, <clears throat> to just think, so selfishly about, well, I can't worry about the people that are not going to church or, or, or the ones who are doing this or that, you know, that according to, 
my church you're not supposed to do. That's very interesting when you go to many different denominations of churches and stuff. They all have their creed of this or that. And, and you're going, okay, that sounds good. But so you're in this church because you like the creed of, for example, you can't do this or that. And you can do this or that. And then another one has completely different creed of what you can do and what you cannot do. Eh? Okay, just saying. So who's right? Who's right? All of them? None of them? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> but I'd like to think global. I really do. I'd like, I like to think more like my heavenly parent. Global. And what is that? Now, then what is my job? So last little story. Uh, a place that I worked at, there was a guy, and he was a little odd <coughs> to everyone. Seems like I get along with people who are a little odd just fine because that won't stop me from trying to get to know them. So it turns out that he very much knows the Bible. He had a Bible with him everywhere. Yeah, just like where he goes. Everywhere. To work. This, that. Always the Bible with him. But he was very strict when it came to that as well. There's nothing wrong with that. But now you ha I had to ask myself, so why are you having the Bible with you? The Bible is supposed to be guidance. A textbook. Not just protection against protection against people right yes uh, that's kind of how he used the bible as protection against people so we were sitting outside we we're talking we had really good talks this night and i and uh we longer story short i he said no i said i said to him i said what would you do if uh because he was talking about that he had this vision of the, of the parking lot out there in front of the store that he was preaching to thousands of people, right? I go, oh, that's interesting. And I said, well, let me ask you then. So God, in a way, has call, called him to teach people, right? Yes, about the Bible and about God, about Jesus. <coughs> so I asked him. <clears throat> I want to see how he understood that, how much of that, how much, how, how, because I said, God calls many, but few follow the call, how he truly, if he truly understood what God is telling him to do, what God is calling him to do. So I asked, I said, so if Jesus were to come down right now and say, okay, all of you here, right? You're on my right side, right? and I'm taking you right now to heaven, right now. Right? Would you go? That, it would be your choice to either go or not. Right? But you could go right now with Jesus to heaven. What would you do? And he says, oh, of course I'd be going. I said, you would. Then what about your vision? Where are you teaching people? He kind of gave me this look. I said, he says, well, what would you do? I said, I would stay behind. How can I be happy in heaven knowing that I've left so many people behind that still need me? That God tells me that people need you. You need to keep teaching. Please continue to do the best. Develop your proper heart towards it all. And keep teaching. Huh? Yes. You know when the, ti the Titanic thing is big right now. The Titanic sank. What did people do? The men stepped back and said, the women and children got to go first. I got to stay. I'm not, not going to take a place. I was a stronger person from a weaker person. Right? And not all of them thought that way, right? Hmm. Well, anyway, yeah, that's what I wanted to share this morning. New book. That was a good one. Good first one, I think. Don't you? <laughs> yeah.
Yes, yes, yes. Mmm. Book of Ezra. First little chapter. Yes. Wonderful. Start another book. Start another book. 400 and some pages. We got a thousand more to go. <laughs> we, we made it here. Right? Yes. All right. Oh, how exciting. Ah, I'm so excited today. Ah, this got me so excited. Anyway, now we'll just do our best out there. Always, 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 always. Under whose guidance? Be clear on whose guidance you truly are. Yes? And what you support. Yes? Yeah? Mm. Must be for everyone. Not just the select few. Yes? Yes. All right. May Heavenly Parent bless you, protect you. Whew. Lots of love coming your way, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, there's always tomorrow, and hopefully I will still be here. Hmm, nice ending.